let's talk about zero register. So re zero register is the constant zero. We cannot overwrite anything in it. It will remain zero. If you try to even store some value in it, it will still be zero. Okay, so zero is already there. You will get to see the significance of uh, having zero. Uh, no need to use any other register. It is usually used for common operations. So for example, uh, if you have to move value between registers. So moving a value between registers means like add T2, S1, and 0. So what we are doing here, can anyone explain? What are we doing here? Hmm? So we have add, sorry, add, sorry, thanks, S1, and I had a zero here. So what we were doing? So we were actually transferring the contents of S1 to another variable named T2, because no matter what, when you perform the S1 plus zero, it will remain S1, and you are assigning it to T2. It is similar. It is similar to something like if you have a code Python snippet like a equals three, b equals four times a, for example, and now c equals b. You want to assign a value of this variable into another variable named c. Okay, and this is how you do it with the help of zero register. Okay, so what you would do is add, in this example, C, B, and zero. It will perform the addition between B and zero and assign it to C. So this is one significance of having zero register. In other, um, in other architectures like MIPS probably or some other processors, they specifically have instruction named move. Move the value of another register to another one, one register to another one. But the, since we are following the simplified version to make it simpler and faster and more powerful, that's why we avoid having these kind of instruction, additional instruction, just to make things simpler. And we follow this strategy to do the same thing. We are following the same instruction and ser it is serving our purpose. Okay, so go back. Similarly, you might also need to load a small constant into a register. So for example, you start writing your code, which you will be doing today as well in, in an activity. So please focus here. Um, you might need to initiate a variable to a certain value. Let's say x equals zero, or sum equals zero, or sum equals 100. And then you start going into the loop. So sum equals 100 means you are initializing a variable named sum with the value 100. How you can initialize it here? With the help of simply x zero or 100. So add i, immediate value you're using. x zero is the uh, variable, and you are adding it into, sorry, x0 is the x0 register, and you are adding it to 100 to make the value, actual value 100, and uh, assigning it to T3. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're initializing T3 with the value 100. Okay? Any question? Yep. x0 is zero register, which is always remain zero. So the purpose of x0 is um, to either move a value from one register to another. You can perform the add operation with x0, which means that you are transferring the value of s1 to t2. Similarly, you can initialize a variable using add i immediate instruction. OK? It's very similar uh, to when you write a code in, in your Python script or something, like you start a equals zero and then, sorry, a equals zero or let's say equals 10. So how do you write this in assembly? So this is what I have been telling you that I add i, it would be a, and 
x 0 and 10. Okay, so what is the content of x 0? It's always 0 and you are adding it with 10 and then assigning the results to a. So you are actually initializing it with a. Why didn't I write it like this at i a x 0? Huh? I could have written it like this, isn't it? Yes. Uh, with add i, the, sec the second publication value can't be read with a. Yes. The second operand in add i must always be a constant value. It can no never be a register. So this is the wrong syntax, wrong format. Okay? So that is why this one is the right way of doing it. Thanks.